Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Just testing the mic. Loud and clear. Awesome. Yeah. How you doing? I'm good. Excited to be here. Oh, I'm excited to have you here. I saw you and a, and a bunch of other people already giving me a couple kudos on what I was talking about because I freaking love what you guys have been building for, I don't know, I've seen you guys have been building for a little, little over a year now. Uh, mm-hmm. And you guys went to, uh, that that test net like six, eight months ago, give or take. And it was explosive with all the NFT project. I mean, it was crazy. So I'm, I was like really, really like early, early with you guys um, and seeing what you guys were building and what you guys are doing um, and what the difference between like all those other uh, ZK rollups are doing and everything else was doing in this page. I seen what you guys are doing. It was so much more unique. I was, I fell in love with that tech versus all this other same tech everybody else was pushing. It was really weird. I don't know. You guys definitely found a spot that was very, very utilized in the space, but missed, missed the, uh, I don't know, misrepresented, and that's the speed and gas fees. Mm-hmm. So, and I, and I love it. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Excited to chat a little bit more on this. No, part. 100%. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I don't want to go too far into um, what, what my questions are going to be or, or any of my comments. So, I'm just, if you're ready, I wouldn't mind just starting up and let's get rolling. Yeah, let's do it. All right. Well, Crypto Monitor, strap in because we're about to break into the speed limit of blockchain. <laughs> Um, and how do you pronounce it? Is it C or C? C? C. C? Like the C? C. 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 I wanted to ask you that before I started just rambling on with my nose on it. Right. So say, forget sluggish transaction and gas fees that make you cry like most of all these chains. Say is here to turbocharge the DeFi experience with hyper fast speed, rock solid security, user friendly interface, uh, which even make grandma a pro in the blockchain. And I, uh, I love making like little quirks in my opening statement. And yeah, yeah. I actually believe that, that, that the faster and easier it is for a user to experience, it's easier for the adoption at all levels. And I think, you know, like nowadays, the grandmas and grandpas are utilizing smartphones just like everybody else. So it's not hard for them to, to come on board, but it, it's really the pains of having to deal with how long these things take. And so mm-hmm. definitely love that little quirk I put in there. So go ahead and uh, introduce yourself a little bit and give us an overview of, um, what, what what you guys have been built and everything you guys have been doing over the last year. I'm excited to share a little bit about uh, SEG. I can quickly introduce um, myself and then give uh, a high-level overview on um, on SEG. So, um, you know, I've been working um, in the, the Web3 and crypto space for pretty much the past three years, primarily as a, a growth lead um, for different DeFi protocols. I started off my career joining a founding team on Solana, where we were building cross-chain infrastructure, and I served as the, the head of marketing and growth for that team. After that experience, I went on to join um, Trader Joe, the, the leading decentralized exchange on Avalanche. And at the time, um, you know, they were um, preparing for the multi-chain expansion efforts of the DEX. So one of my main responsibilities as a member of the growth team was just um, helping develop the go-to-market strategy for deploying the DEX on Arbitrum and BNP chain from a marketing perspective. And now I'm a part of the, um, you know, the Say Labs team. I've been um, on the team since our test night day. Um, and, you know, kind of experienced uh, the mainnet launch back in May and now uh, working on a lot of exciting initiatives with Save 2 as we look to um, onboard and support a lot of the EVM developer community. Um, and yeah, I really just focus here on um, ecosystem growth, primarily uh, trying to see how we can further enable and support the growth of different stakeholders uh, within the uh, say community, you know, whether you're an ecosystem founder, a community member, ambassador, um, really just trying to see how we can further enable their growth within the ecosystem, ensuring that everyone has uh, everything in place to really succeed um, on say. Okay, well, I just want to say that's an impressive resume, oh. <laughs> hands down, right there, because because Trader Joe's is definitely my favorite, um, just overall deck on Avalanche, and I was doing all, all of their campaigns when they they were expanding to their deep liquidity cross chain stuff that they oh, were doing. Awesome. So it's funny, yeah. I was like probably crossing paths with you, you know, at the same time that's as we were developing. Yeah, I was yeah. that, that's awesome. Or, or, or helping to develop the part. Yeah, so no, that's really cool. No, I'm I'm huge about growth and ecosystem, just like mm-hmm. you. I'm all about um, utility and understanding the foundation of what's going to help us, you know, kind of become an actual standard in the world instead of that uh, the the look that we're just an, another scam that keeps on growing. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I hate that mentality. So definitely love what you're doing, and I and I'm impressed 100. percent That's pretty cool, man. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate um, that. Yeah, just go ahead and give us a a, a a deep dive on what 
say it. Yeah, definitely. Um, so I can kind of give a high level overview right now. Um, for those that might not be too familiar with Say, as I mentioned before, um, Say has been live on Mainnet um, since around May of 2023. Um, you know, since launching uh, Mainnet, we've seen the network perform um, in an outstanding way, really, with um, a lot of very impressive kind of um, network stats when it comes to uptime and speed. Uh, so, you know, quickly kind of um, give a, a brief overview about like, uh, you know, where Say was. Um, with V1 and where we're heading with V2. Um, so, you know, say first and foremost is the uh, fastest chain to finality point blank with a uh, current um, time to finality of 390 milliseconds. And, you know, with V2, uh, it'll, it'll actually get even faster with um, the optimistic parallelization that we will intru- uh, introduce, um, you know, kind of heading into say V2, which is kind of the major focus uh, of the entire kind of network and ecosystem. Uh, so say V2 introduces um, the first major upgrade to say, which will make it the first paralyzed uh, EVM. And again, like say is a fully open source general purpose blockchain. And um, with V2 and paralyzing the EVM, uh, this approach to scaling Ethereum is one that has never been done before. And it kind of offers a new pathway to, um, you know, explore the growing Ethereum ecosystem along with other layer two solutions that are building on Ethereum. Uh, we have a lot of exciting kind of campaigns and initiatives oriented around um, Save E2 and supporting and further enabling the um, Ethereum developers. And, you know, the upgrade brings a suite of functionalities, including, you know, backwards compatibility with EVM smart contracts, um, allowing developers to deploy existing Ethereum smart contracts with uh, on, on to say without any um, code modifications at all. Um, so this essentially will allow um, the wide and, you know, vast EVM developer community to experience the benefits that the same blockchain has when it comes to just throughput and network efficiency um, while, you know, still using all of the coding language and tooling that they are familiar with. Yeah, I see that you pinned. All right. So if tweet, anybody, is helpful, yeah. yeah, I was about to say, yeah, if anybody's, yeah, if anybody's interested, go do some research right now. If you have some questions about it, you know, join the community, get ready because B2 is coming and, and I want, I want my community to be ready because like, I, I, I totally agree with, when I was using you guys' uh, stuff early on and messing around with, I can't remember the launch pad it was, it's one of those weird name launch pads, uh, but, but they, they had a bunch of the stuff on there and I was messing around with the testnet tokens. And, and you're right, like finality was, was, was really quick in test, but even there, after you guys, you know, uh, did your test and you guys figured out all your little uh, congestion issues or bugs you guys might've had on day one, after that, everything was very clean, fast. Like it, it, It's, it's kind of weird because it takes you longer as a person to do the functioning than it actually takes for the transaction to go. And that's how it technically should be. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have to wait five or 10 minutes for something to finalize. And I'm just sitting biting my nails the entire time. And I think that's another thing you guys help alleviate is that other side stress of what's happening, you know? So de- definitely pretty cool. And I like that, that you guys are really, uh, you guys have matured, you guys' ecosystem as fast as you have to get to now where you're ready for your version two. So that's pretty, that's pretty, that's pretty neat. So if anybody is looking to ha- ask a question about any of this, please uh, leave a comment. I'm going to be uh, reading comments about uh, this here as we as we continue, and it's going to be part of our our, our community questions too. So I, I like to have that filled up too for engagement. Awesome, yeah, sounds great. But yeah. Oh, so you know, with that being said, could you touch on a little bit on how you guys were able to achieve such fast speeds? Like, uh, you know, like how that turbocharging uh, consensus actually works behind the scenes versus why there's a lot of issues with other chains and not being able to even match close to you guys' speed? Yeah, definitely. Um, so when it comes to like the performance of say V1, uh, there's a few kind of like uh, technical optimizations that say offers that differentiates itself um, from others. Uh, so I had a thread that kind of um, overviews a lot of uh, the optimization. So I'm seeing if I can pull it up now uh, to pick, because I was like pinning the ones. But um, one second, if I don't find it, then we can. Yeah, I'm the same way. I'm I'm the same. Oh, no, I'm I'm a visual visual learner, so it's uh, helpful sometimes to to pull it up. If I can't find it now, I can just kind of go over it um, at a high level. Uh, It seems like I'm having some trouble finding it, though. Um, Let me see. Uh, I think I might have it here. One sec. Um, it, it does refer to some of the um, kind of um, optimizations that will come in terms of performance for uh, V2. So, um, yeah, I have it here. So, um, 
Say's functionality and kind of what separates itself from um, like the other layer one blockchains in terms of its uh, technical capabilities uh, hindered onto a few optimizations. Um, the first is uh, Say DB, which is an improvement to the storage layer that prevents uh, state bloat. So this essentially improves uh, the state read and write performance, and it makes it a lot easier for new nodes to state sync and catch up. It's uh, a little technical there. Um, but it essentially allows the um, chain to operate in a more efficient way. Um, and then I, I want to pull up some numbers here so um, so it can be a little bit more kind of like contextual. So um, in a high level, um, from a performance perspective, uh, from a performance perspective, Savy2 will offer 28,300 batch transactions per second of throughput while offering the 390 millisecond time to finality. Um, kind of to further break that down and like how it's um, achievable. I can talk a little bit more about some of the specific optimizations or uh, maybe we can talk about Savy too. What do you think will be the most helpful kind of explanation for the audience? Um, some of it's more background information Prob on like where, how, uh, probably uh, uh, Savy too. probably what, what you guys are doing to, you know, from, from, from what you have now and how fast it is now to what it's going to be scaling up to, which is Savy too. Because I mean, really, what what, what you I, this is you guys are like one one of the goats in the space. You guys built some a, a real, like I, I I you know I I'm not trying to blow smoke up your butt, but I mean it's true. You guys built a really great foundation, a really great community, really great product that's being utilized obviously heavily from the start. There's a lot of other chains right now that kind of they had their they had their beginning and then they just kind of fell off because they really didn't have anything different, anything better than what is out there. And you guys have definitely been pushing something different. So lead a discussion on what you think is going to be the best point on for, for you that you think is going to cover for, for say. And then I will make comments here and, and, and questions within it that might, I think, be the value of what, you know, the community will take from it. But, you know, pretty much understanding what you guys built and why that value is there mm -hmm. compared to what everything else and why that that's going to be where you want to be a builder, a community member and or um, working in the space and not just community. There's a lot, there's a lot of job opportunities happen in early chains. Like that's how I've got my opportunity in this, in this place. Uh, I, I joined an early chain yeah. and took off from there. So, so like, just, just go ahead and, and, and what do you, whatever you can lead it. And then I'll ask questions in between. Cause I know we, we had, we, we went back and forth with our notes on what we were going to talk about, mm -hmm. but you know, I, I know that you guys have got some really big stuff. I don't want to take Alpha away, but whatever you want to discuss that you think is the best, I'm, I'm all for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think it, maybe it would be helpful um, for the audience to give a little bit of insight into like what, you know, um, what's what were some of the motivations that led um, kind of the labs teams to uh, propose the, the V2 upgrade and, you know, what were the motivations behind the upgrade and then uh, maybe chatting a little bit more. hundred percent. That's actually... Yeah. That's pretty smart. Yeah, yeah. Talk see, about see where the milestones and challenges fought each other. Exactly, you know what I yeah. mean? In order, to, um, and then we can because yeah, I mean, go ahead. Hey, like, like, like I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix, right? Mm -hmm. If no money was having a problem, you guys wouldn't be pushing V two. Exactly, you guys would be just fine. Let things grow and scale, but now it's time to fix the things that are really kind of hindering that ultimate growth. Mm -hmm. so, go ahead, let's touch on it. Yeah, definitely. So, um, to first touch upon, like you know, uh, what what led to the to the decision to launch uh you know uh save you two in the time that we did um essentially so we had launched um the main net in in may and like i mentioned that the network was performing um um amazingly we had seen a lot of impressive performance metrics in terms of uptime in terms of efficiencies and uh, the speed of transaction and then um kind of our first instinct was like okay let's um start to chat with some developers and, and gather some feedback here let's um you know let's talk to the people that are actually building on the chain and um you know prospects that would be interested in building on the chain and see what um would be most helpful for them because at the end of the day that's always been the focus it's you know providing the best infrastructure for these developers to offer um trading applications that have user experiences that rival that of web2 applications while still boasting all of you know the decentralization and kind of like crypto native um technical um kind of like uh, implementations so after speaking to a ton of developers post-launch um, the team kind of quickly came to the conclusion that the amount of um, work tooling applications and mindshare that existed around the evm was significant enough to warrant supporting this on say um, in a more kind of like prioritized manner 
Um, multi-language support was something that was always on our roadmap uh, since kind of the inception of Say. We understood the need to be able to access and be accessible, better said, to a wider range of developers. So um, after mainnet launch, you know, the focus, of course, during the, the testnet and mainnet launch days was, hey, like, let's get the chain out there. Let's get people building on the chain. Um, and let's, sure, let's make sure that it's, um, you know, fully ready to go for our mainnet launch and for the developers that have been waiting for it. Um, after we were able to accomplish that and see that the network Work was able to, you know, run smoothly after, you know, a few months and uh, after even some attacks like uh, the inscriptions attacks and see how uh, gas prices were handling and see how the network was I handling. I remember yeah, that. Kind of, I remember yeah. that. It was weird. Mm -hmm. It was a weird day that day. You guys handled it very impressive, though. Every time any, like, I would say, uh, investor or user experience got haltered at all, you guys were on top of it. I got to give you guys that. Like, e tweets came out. People knew about it. Like, even I knew about it. And I wasn't even having a problem that day because i wasn't utilizing anything that day and i got the notification so definitely transparent open you guys are awesome just want to put that out yeah there for that because i do remember that yeah. actually happening so yeah exactly and i think now like you've seen like something like an inscription attack which has kind of been experienced by um the majority of the uh live networks whether it's a layer one or layer two you kind of are able to see um, you know, it's kind of like a test run on how the um, different, um, you know, blockchains are able to operate with an influx of um, demand and uh, transactions. And this is an important test because, you know, uh, if we are to see a blockchain scale and, you know, continue to see the evolution of different use cases on chain, um, having infrastructure that can scale with those use cases and with those increased demands is paramount. You know, that kind of goes back to the origin story of why State was created in the first place. I won't go too deeply into it, but um, kind of the TLDR there is that our um, our two uh, co-founders were looking to actually build a decentralized exchange and they wanted to have, you know, a decentralized exchange that essentially could, you know, scale to the likes of, uh, of a Binance or of a Robinhood, but still, um, you know, boast like the decentralized um, kind of like aspects that, you know, we, we live and die by here in crypto. Um, and they kind of quickly realized that the infrastructure wasn't um, kind of capable of providing a scalable solution there so that's how like say first got started like hey like we need to address some of the the bottlenecks um from you know like the base layer and address like uh kind of you know what specifically is holding back some of these uh networks from being able to scale and then um kind of that led to say and you know where i was talking about uh say v2 this is kind of where it's like okay like um you know this this works a lot of the optimizations that we implemented into the tech stack for for say v1 have proven themselves um in terms of their ability to you know um have a network that operates quite efficiently with low gas fees with high throughput um very quick speed um and is actually able to scale with like an influx of uh you know transactions coming from something like uh inscriptions so so then it was like okay you know what's the next step here and um it, it kind of became a no-brainer um, to prioritize the um, support for for EVM and to now make say more accessible to a wider range of developers, and this really is uh, a focus that we have to further enhance and empower um, EVM developers on what they're already working on. Um, you know, being able to offer them. Um, you know, the ability to build on Say's infrastructure and then, you know, no longer have to deal with uh, extremely high gas prices when um, the the network is seeing a, a large influx of transactions or slow speeds or, you know, whatever it may be. Now they're able to still use all of the tooling and um, coding language that they're accustomed to, but enjoy um, kind of a lot of the benefits that you see from a high throughput chain like Say or even Solana. Um, that, that 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 was like kind of the- No, I, I totally agree. Uh, no, yeah, I totally agree, and I actually like that. I, I want to. I, I have a, actually, I have like four little comments I want to touch mm -hmm. on there. Uh, extremely smart move by you guys over there, like hundred percent by allowing the EVM compatibility because it not only opens the doors for you, but it uh, it allows for easy access for a lot of these developers that are young and new that you know have only learned Solidity at this point, but they they're hungry to to join some new stuff. And creativity is. Like you, you don't hold back on creativity. You know, you open the doors for as much as possible. A lot of them might fail, but if you get that one gem out of the rough, it, it's it's worth it. And so, you you know, you you kind of open it up so that much more robust uh, developers and community members can really join in. Uh, and and I like that. And a lot of people understand that the EVM compatible uh, wallets and stuff like that. So it's it's just a little easier overall to have user adoption on top of that to be able to to, to have that. Uh, 
even compatibility all within one wallet. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I, I love what you guys are doing. It's awesome. And then I wanted the main thing I wanted to touch on, and I touch this on on only a few times, and this is one of those times is I tell my my, my community all the time. You look at the product. If it's great, you deep you deep dive in. But you better learn about the team. The team is the most important part uh, of any uh, huge product, any blue chip. And if you can't tell by just hearing him talk about the CEO, about the team, about the moves they've been making, how, the, the, what they had to do, and the rapid time they had to do it, no nobody builds what they built clean as they built it, and then push the V2 this soon because they know they want to make it great for for their community and for their builders. So I mean, just hundred percent hands down. Very impressed with you guys, and it ain't cheap. It ain't easy. What you guys are doing is an expensive, hard, crazy job you guys are doing, and you're doing it in rapid speeds. And uh, also about the little uh, congestion stuff, the little issue with the scripts. It's funny, is because when I call it, I call it DDoS from back in the old gaming days. But that's what it felt like. Exactly. You, like yeah. that happened, and you're like, what's what's going on? Like something just doesn't feel right. And and it really didn't for just a little bit though. And you guys, like I'm saying, the team behind it saw it, seen the issue, and resolved it like. And quick and now v2 is going to make it to where it's not a, it's a non-issue period so mm-hmm. i i really love and i'm very impressed with everything but uh hands down man the ceo can can definitely make some moves there i love how he inceptized something and was like you know this is what i want to do but this is not what it's needed and decided to build and scale up to what you guys have now say so it's freaking awesome impressive hands down i wish he was here for me to shake his <laughs> digital hand yeah yeah <laughs> i think you brought up a great point there on, on the team like that that's something that i can completely agree and you know being in kind of working in the Web3 space for the past three years, I can't emphasize enough how important it is to have um, both like, uh, you know, a team that works well with one another, but also a team that's just able to leverage a lot of um, their past experiences to, um, you know, like ruthless prioritization is so important in crypto. There's so many different things to work on. There's kind of a lot of distractions that uh, can like send you down a rabbit hole, which sometimes won't lead to actually like, you know, the the optimized kind of approach towards getting towards, you know, whatever your North Star metric is. And for us, I'd say it's really providing the best infrastructure for these developers. So that's one approach that I think has led to, um, you know, why I say has been able to um, ship so relentlessly. Like, you know, we we don't just like talk the talk. Uh, we, we, we really um, let kind of our um, actions speak for themselves. And like, with that being said, like, Savy 2 was announced, I think it was like maybe one, I, yeah, I think it was one month ago, maybe it was uh, six weeks. And Savy 2 code is already, um, it's our, Savy 2 is already code complete and live on DevNet. We have done performance benchmarks um, using distributed nodes and we've seen over 5K uh, TPS and 300 milliseconds time to finality. And um, like we have already applications um, building on our DevNet to help battle test it, um, you know, bug bashing, doing everything that uh, we possibly can to ensure that um, V2 is as um, kind of efficient as ready and ready as possible for when the, main, the testnet launch does come and then mainnet launch following shortly after. Let's go. See, you guys, like, like, like you said, it's, 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 it's not even just about having a good team. It's about having a team that is good and can deliver, exactly. right? Because you can have a good team, but execution matters. I, I tell people all the time, if you can't execute your plan, you can, you know, in the end, it doesn't matter how hard you worked on it. Nobody's going to understand what you got going or, or you're not going to play it, right? And it's going to be a hard road up. Exactly. So definitely agree with what you guys are doing. Like a hundred percent. Like it, 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 I love yeah, it. I maybe, mean, maybe I can take it, this it, opportunity it, 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 um, to honestly give some um, insights into like who the the C Labs team is. I feel like sometimes it it might not uh, get highlighted enough. I can start quickly with you know uh, it was, that was yeah. actually funny. That was you know that's funny. I was actually going to be one of my questions mm-hmm. because I know about you know the foundry and the, you know the difference and how that works yeah. and everything because I'm 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 very in, t- in tune with a couple other chains that do the same thing. So I would love yes definitely I give us a little overview on how the, the labs has helped support and grow and scale in the background and, you know, give, give them some kudos and some love. Cause you know, oh. they're, in the end, they're the ones helping upgrade everything. So. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like first and foremost, like the say developer team is absolutely cracked. Like I, I can't emphasize that enough. It's some of the, the smartest individuals I've like ever spoken to. And I'm not just saying that I had, we recently a month ago had um, our say war room which was essentially an event where we all got together. Like, and the, the labs team is very much so distributed globally, but we're like, Hey, like, like we need to get together, lock ourselves in, in a room and just like workshop new ideas and start battle testing Savy too. And that's like exactly what we did. So I had the privilege and honor of connecting with some of our developers for seven days straight, you know, all nighters. Like it was, it was an amazing experience. They're, 
both extremely dedicated and also just like some of the biggest giga brains that I've met. Um, but yeah, not to get too deep into that. Um, you know, the, the say labs team is, so that's why yeah. the coffee stock prices went up for those seven days. I mean, um, we, <laughs> we, we were solely focused on like, um, getting the the network ready for v2 like that's like literally all we spoke about um yeah no we, that's, we, we, that's freaking awesome yeah. that's awesome that just shows the commitment from the top down you know from the marketing from the developers yeah. from the you know the core teams everybody coming together to make sure in these next seven days we crack out everything that needs to be done that we would normally not be able to do mm-hmm. together because you guys are all in different time zones and whatnot so yeah no definitely that's freaking awesome yeah yeah it was exciting and you know um so the, I, I keep on saying i'm <laughs> I keep on saying that I'm going to give background on the last team, but I couldn't Bless you. not do so. Yeah, yeah, thank you. So, um, yeah, I think it's important to know. So, like, uh, the majority of our developer team and growth team is, um, you know, a lot from, like, the Bay Area. We have a lot of, like, Silicon uh, Valley native um, developers and also some which have just had, you know, multiple years on end of developer experience across different ecosystems within uh, just, like, the crypto landscape. We have some ETH OGs. We have some Solana developers. We have kind of developers from all of the leading ecosystems and that also spans to the growth team as well, which makes it um, super helpful when it comes to, um, you know, some of these big strategic decisions that we have or maybe challenges that we face being able to draw on the past experiences of um, different members of our team makes it um, so much more efficient in kind of like our operating processes. Um, so that's one thing that I would definitely like to highlight. Um, and, you know, with Jay and Jeff both leading the way, um, those are our two co-founders. Jay is our CTO. He has, um, you know, past uh, software engineering experience. He was one of the first software engineers at Robinhood, um, was there during the, the whole GameStop saga, which made him like a huge decentralized maxi. And he's just like one of the smartest individuals and down to earth individuals I've ever met. He's kind of leading the way for our developer team. Also with, you know, some, some of our um, uh, managers on the ecosystem and protocol front, which are just like extremely intelligent X Roblox, Twitter, Ethereum engineers that just have like such a wealth of knowledge. Um, and then on, um, on the growth side, we have Jeff, who's the other co-founder. He has, you know, years of experience in kind of the TradFi space is one of the most like relentless business operators I've ever met. Um, the dude closes deals like I've never seen before and, uh, just has like an innate ability to get the most out of the people that he works with, which, um, has been super excited. I've definitely learned a lot from him just on how to operate as, you know, like, a a growth minded individual and thinking about um, kind of that ruthless prioritization, which I mentioned is is something that's super important. I think sometimes it gets a bit overlooked in crypto. You know, there's so much to work on. There's so much exciting things happening. But, you know, I'm really focusing on the highest ROI initiatives for the network and for the ecosystem and community is, I think, what really threads the needle. And that's kind of um, one of the main focuses of the growth team. It's like, hey, you know, there's we're getting a ton of inbound leads um, for, you know, on the BD front for new ecos- for new projects looking to launch in the ecosystem. And, you know, our, our time and energy is um, quite limited. So we want to ensure that we're supporting the ones that are most dedicated towards building, um, you know, long term, um, you know, bringing long term value to our ecosystem. The ones that will lay a lot of the, the groundwork for each of our different ecosystems, whether it be DeFi, NFTs, gaming social to really thrive on their own and i think um while we're still in the early days i like can't help but be like extremely excited about where we are today in terms of just like the foundational layer that we've set um for the ecosystem to thrive and with say v2 and you know the the mass expansion of kind of developer um accessibility that will come uh, as EVM becomes compatible with say, um, you know, it's just like, it, it seems like exponential growth is, is simply what's on the, the docket is what's uh, up for bad. I 100% agree. You guys not only built like the whole utility stack and foundation and infrastructure, but you're, you're continually to addressing the issues and pains to just continually scale. So I definitely agree there. Um, you know, with that being said, we, we, we've been talking for a while. I got a few community questions, if you don't mind, and maybe answering a few community yeah. questions. But actually, one of them was one that I meant to ask because it's a pain that I deal with all the time in trading. Yeah. And I and I we didn't touch on it. And I, and, I, and we and obviously, if it's too technical, it's totally fine. But it's kind of about front running bots. Um, what have you guys done to kind of help protect against the, that kind of issue? Because I know that I think some of the other chains have, you know, done their own like separate memory pool things or some some just differentiating things in order 
to not have one public main pool so that front runs and med bots and all that don't attack. And it gives, you know, your community a better chance of fair trading. Yeah, definitely. Um, I did have some information on front running prevention. This was something that, um, let me just, let me just try to pull it up so I don't misquote it. Um, but yeah, like definitely that was, um, you know, when, um, when V1 was being built, um, it was like super important for us to kind of focus on like, okay, um, like what are some of the main things holding back some of like the high throughput chains now, like Solana, for example. And we knew that front running prevention was something that was going to be, um, you know, extremely important. So implementing um, built in kind of front running prevention mechanisms and our like built in matching engine um, to the base of say V1 was what uh, was like kind of extremely helpful there. Um, let me see if I can find a little bit more of a deep dive into um, how the front running prevention works. I don't want to, uh, you know, claim to uh, get into these technical details without, um, you know, I don't want to misquote anything. Um, let me see here. Yeah, maybe I can uh, pin a tweet from Jay. Uh, Jay always has uh, these quite helpful um, kind of like threads that break down each of the um, kind of optimizations that we've had there. So I think that will be helpful. I definitely know that just having fast speed helps a lot, you know, because I know when, when you have to take a lot of time, that's when those bots have that enough time to get in front, fight each other. Yeah, but it's the fight, there, fighting the It's just one thing that... There. Lot, yeah, and having it built into... The yeah. System. Definitely wasn't focused. Yeah, it's, def there. it's definitely... A, 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 when I was early in trading, I had no idea the difference in slippage and all that. I got wrecked a couple of oh, times. for sure. Not knowing what I was doing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it really does suck. hundred percent. Well, that being said, I do have another question too. I'll, 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 I have I, I, I uh, comment or I liked a few of these questions because they were really good. Mm -hmm. uh, about some of them we covered towards the towards the mid and end, so some of them kind of already got answered. Where did it go? Yeah, I can I, I can like give a little um, more insights into like how um, say has implemented the built-in uh, front-running prevention mechanisms. Like the mechanisms essentially work by randomly delaying the execution of some trades, um, making it more difficult for traders to front run. Um, it's super important, obviously, um, to protect kind of market participants overall there. Um, and it was something that we realized that was like quite essential um, when building, let's say, in, uh, even the, the V1 version. All right, well, I'll go ahead and bring up a live question from one of our community members. Let's get a good question, guys. I'm going to pick one of you guys random. I got a lot of hands up, so I'm just really glad we got a lot of engagement today. Who am I going to pick? Uh, let's try DeFi Ames. You were the very first hand up right at the very beginning. Let's get a good question in here. I know you always do, so I love it. I'm glad I got a lot of engagement today. You guys are awesome. Hope you guys learned something today and uh, kind of understand what they're building and really kind of jump in there and utilize it. Hello. What's up, Angs? I'm good, man. Uh, thanks very much for bringing me up. Um, my question for Sai is uh, regarding uh, market uh, manipulation. Like, uh, how do you deal with the issue of uh, front running and the market manipulation? With the <laughs> I knew that was going to be a hot topic. <laughs> I knew it was going to be a hot. That's why I asked it. You must have just missed me. We were just talking about that. That's so good. Well, at least, at least I know I was asking a good question. And that was actually from a community member, another different community member. So it's obviously a hot topic for people dealing with Ethereum's front running and stuff. <laughs> that's freaking awesome. All right. Well, Ames, love your question. We did, we, that's our, that was our already first question. So I'm going to pull up another person and then we'll have that answer. Oh, we basically already answered it, but we're going to put a little piece up here in a minute once he finds it so he, everybody can kind of read a little bit of it and understand it. But I'll get another question. That's also good. <laughs> oh, feels like a Monday. Let's try a new face today. We're all familiar. Here's one. Here's one new face. Go ahead with your question whenever you're ready. If it allows them to come up. That's the problem with Twitter. There it goes. Whenever you're unmuted, go ahead and speak. Hello, can you hear me? I can. Go ahead. 
Okay, can I ask my question? Yeah, go ahead. But okay, my question is: partnership is always an important factor for every project. So, who is your partner? What are the benefits you get from this relationship? Is my question. Yeah, definitely. I mean, partnerships major focus. Uh, definitely heading into Sabi too. It's something that we've been thinking about uh, connecting with a lot of like the leading. Um, Ethereum um, kind of dApps and different communities that exist today. Um, the main focus there is like, you know, not just trying to force a partnership, but trying to understand how we can kind of organically work together to, you know, further empower what they're already working on. Like we don't have a lot of um, uh, goals to, you know, dr drastically like uh, rip and replace a lot of like the processes that developers or ecosystem projects are already working on. We're just trying to present, say, in a way that can, um, you know, further empower what they're working on. And partnerships is a major focus. It's been, um, you know, since the inception of, of, of say, um, and what it, 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 it partnerships really span across a few different of like the work streams that we have. So obviously on the BB front, it's probably like the clearest, um, you know, like use case for a partnership is like uh, trying to get some of these ecosystem um, teams to, you know, deploy on say and, uh, you know, reap the benefits of the ecosystem and also the community. But we're also working on a lot of partnerships to just, um, you know, further grow, say, internationally. So thinking about partnering with a lot of um, regional communities in some of the crypto hotspots across the world is something that I focus on a lot. Um, another example is like partnerships when it comes to community efforts with the ambassador program, uh, trying to connect our ambassadors with a wide range of, you know, different partners that can either provide them further incentives, um, opportunities. I think, uh, the host here mentioned something that excited me in the beginning is that, you know, being early in an ecosystem provides community members with a lot of opportunities uh, for pretty like exponential growth when it comes to just like professional development. And that's something that we focus a lot on um, with the ambassador program. It's connecting individuals um, kind of with people working on some similar stuff that are interested, maybe whether it be DeFi or NFTs and connecting them with one another. Um, connecting them with early ecosystem projects that may need a, a new community moderator or may need uh, a marketer or BD lead. And I think the best place um, to source those roles are from the community. So that's like one thing that I've been kind of um, most proud of when it comes to say is seeing some of our community members and ambassadors just like, you know, 10x their following on, on Twitter, start to network within the industry, get full-time job opportunities, and then eventually start to contribute to the ecosystem via one of the ecosystem projects, or maybe they launch their own project. And um, it kind of starts to create this uh, virtuous flywheel where um, like the say snowball just starts to roll and gets bigger and bigger and faster and faster. And it's all really um, kind of fueled by the, the community itself with, you know, the support of the labs team, ensuring that everyone has the adequate resources, um, and like tooling that they may need, but it's really driven by the ecosystem participants, which is something that's super exciting. I think that's one thing that really excites, excites me about crypto in general. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was an awesome question and an awesome answer. You really delivered that one. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So let's get uh, let's get one or two more up here. Let's see. Uh, I haven't heard from you ever, so I'm gonna let you have a chance, and then I'll I'll have one of my regulars come up here with a question. I think that I think I approved them, but right when I clicked them, they disappeared. Let me try it one more time. Oh, they're not here. So I'm going to pick someone else. All right, let's try. Oh, no, it came back up. I'm going to approve you, Fire. Baby Crypto 18. Whenever you're ready, or whenever it allows you to. Go ahead with the question whenever you're ready. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Sorry, my mute would not come off. Yes, you're loud and clear. Go ahead with your question, buddy. Okay. So my question is, is your platform suitable for crypto beginners or does it only limited for professional users? This is my question. Yeah. Um, was the question 
I think I missed the first half of your question there. I heard professional users at the end. If you can repeat the first half. Sorry, I don't know if I, I kind of missed the first half of the question there. Yeah. All right. Can you can you repeat your question? Yeah, because the first part of it did kind of cut out a little. I think he was talking about is it, it, it user experience easy for coming on and adopting like oh, that? How what, oh, how easy it is oh, for, for users to come in, or is it just more professional? You know, change. Yeah. You know, kinda, yeah, that's a great oriented. question. Um, I mean, it kind of uh, span like opens up my mind um, to like this broader discussion around usability of crypto applications. I'll touch upon it a little bit just because it's kind of what went into. Um, the origin story of say, which was like, hey, like, you know, we need to make crypto more both accessible to a wider range of um, participants, but also easier to be onboarded. Um, that's like, like, that was the core focus of say, and still remains the core focus of say is providing infrastructure for developers that can build usable applications that have a similar user experience to that of web two applications. So it's definitely a major focus and um, kind of shifting on now to a more kind of immediate focus from the say labs team is onboarding. And I think onboarding new users, community members, ecosystem participants is a major focus. It's something that I kind of have been um, not losing sleep on these past few days, but it's like, it, it definitely occupies a lot of the, the strategic thinking that I do. It's like, you know, there's a lot of excitement um, geared towards say currently and um, making it as easy as possible to be onboarded to the ecosystem, to get set up with the same native wallet, to um, get introduced to some of the tokens on say and some of the um, dApps that are live on say is of paramount importance. And I think that's a lot of the advice that I've gotten spoken to some people that were, you know, a part of building up Solana during the early days and being able to kind of distill um, some complicated terms at, at, at times and break it down into kind of an easy onboarding flow is um, extremely important. And with that being said, I think we have made um, pretty substantial strides in that and the EVM kind of tooling and applications will also help with this. So like soon with Sabi2, um, you know, users from any ecosystem will be able to access, say, via their MetaMask wallet, for example. So this should, you know, dramatically um, kind of ease the process of being onboarded to say. Um, but right now, currently, like you can um, set up a Compass or Fin wallet, which are the two, say, native wallets, um, you know, very familiar uh, kind of interface for anyone that's ever used a decentralized wallet before. And, you know, you can make your way to um, like Palette NFT Exchange, Astroport, um, DragonSwap, which is launching shortly. And um, it, it should feel very familiar to a lot of, our, you know, any the decentralized applications that you've used in the past. They all kind of pride themselves on being super user friendly. And, and, um, you know, one thing that I'm most excited about is kind of our, our community and our community's ability to introduce, say, to new uh, members. And, um, you know, one kind of saying that's been going around these past few weeks is that say is for everyone. And um, I, I heard it once, I think it was like two weeks ago, I heard it from a community member and I'm like, I'm like, damn, like that really like uh, struck a chord with me because yes, like say is for everyone. Like, you know, we don't have any um, private telegram groups or, or, you know, gated channels. Like if you're interested in um, being part of the say community and participating in the ecosystem, like, like we are um, open to supporting you. We are here to like further empower your growth within the ecosystem, especially from the community front. Like if you want to like come in and join the community, like join the discord, connect with um, some of our community leaders and moderators. I see Bojack in the crowd. Uh, I'm sure there's others as well. Like huge shout out to uh, Brownhawk I see as well. Uh, Jaira, I, I won't go through it through everyone, but you know, in this community, in this space right now, there's a handful of community leaders and moderators that would help you, um, you know, just get more familiar with with say and uh, you know, join the ambassador program, uh, connect with the labs team on Twitter. Um, there, there's there's so much to do, and I think maybe that could be a good segue uh, as like we think about what are some next steps for everyone in this space. Um, like definitely like like follow the say network account, um, the official account for any major upgrades that you may see. Also, I would encourage you to join the discord, um, check out uh, the ambassador program that we have. We actually have a Twitter page that's dedicated towards the ambassador program. It highlights a lot of um, the awesome stuff happening uh, amongst people, amongst like uh, ambassadors. So that would be a cool step. And, you know, you can give me a follow. I'm always looking to highlight and serve as like a megaphone for a lot of the, the ecosystem builders within our space. So yeah, I'm like super excited 
excited to onboard anyone. Uh, I know I've kind of rambled on a bit, but onboarding people to the state community and ecosystem is like the focus that I have in my mind right now. And I just continue to try to hammer at it um, to to make the process as enjoyable as possible. And also, you know, as um, as valuable as possible for those people. Like we don't want you just to be onboarded to the community. We want you connected with like-minded individuals. We want you starting to make progress and whatever your goal may be, uh, quite rapidly. And I think that's one of the benefits of, of joining uh, an up and coming layer one um, early is that uh, it, it's definitely an accelerated path towards growth, in my opinion. 100% agree. And just like we were talking about early, this is an early ecosystem. So if you are looking to find opportunities out there, you can find it, you know, by, by being in the community and seeing the community growth and, and what's in the ecosystem. There's a lot of opportunity out there. And we touched on it so many times. And a lot of people out here, you guys are pretty smart. You guys are savvy. You guys have a lot to offer. And you guys have been weathering this crypto uh, uh, bear for for the two and a half years now, and it's been horrible. There's a good opportunity now as you know, our markets are starting to come back alive. People are starting to come back in the system and builders are starting to get life again. You might as well be out there enjoying the early benefits and opportunities of a chain that is fastly scaling, but it's still extremely early. Like you gotta, you gotta see how how early you are in in in, in the, the aspect of the chain. And it, 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 I can't stress this. Not financial advice. Do your own research. But I remember when Solana was two dollars, four five five years ago, give or take. And I put a few hundred dollars in that money because my friend told me to, and I was very happy during the bull run. And so, like, I'm not trying to say that, it, it, but there's a possibility. You might as well put your money with with good teams, with good tech, good foundation, and with them pushing the entire time in the bear market, which was some of the worst bear market we've ever experienced, not just here in the, the crypto, but actually in the Web2 space, everywhere financially was wrecked. And these guys were building building strong and scaling. So you have to like recognize the, these good feet. And when, when, you, when you go to make your investments, you want to look at all of those kind of pain points there and see how they handled it and where they're at now. So there's good, there's good opportunity to come in early. So I'm just saying that. Check it out. Do your research. You know, I love what they're building. And um, I wanted to touch actually on one of my community questions I was mm. reading. Um, this is going to be the, probably the last little question before we kind of wrap things up. And that was we talked about you know the EVM being the focus, right? Let's get the scalability. Let's get more more uh, the people in the ecosystem growing to bring more community members. So what are you guys doing to support those actual? Do you guys have a grant system or or some type of um, you know, support system you guys have built to kind of bring in some of those bigger uh, projects to this the state network? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a major focus. It's kind of been uh, enrooted in, in Say's kind of value since the very start, which is, you know, being an active publisher for our ecosystem projects, ensuring that, um, you know, they have everything in place to um, succeed and really flourish within the ecosystem. So, you know, uh, what that looks like is, a handful of different things. It starts with just like developer developer documentation. It starts with onboarding developers. I kind of just rambled on about onboarding about the community and ecosystem, but um, having making it easy for developers to start to build on say is like uh, of paramount importance. And you know, um, we understand that. So we're doing a lot of different initiatives on the developer front to continue to um, kind of capitalize on a lot of the inbound excitement that we have, and you know. Um, further enable the the growth. It's very much like an accelerated path. Like, hey, you're interested in building on say, like, perfect. Like, a member of the labs or foundation team uh, will be reaching out to you with a ton of resources and support that will hopefully just accelerate your journey on say uh, quite drastically. Which is something that's awesome. Um, we do have grant programs. We had a, an incubator um, previously that was super exciting, where we've seen a lot of um, some say native teams come out of uh, a lot of different initiatives on the developer and ecosystem front. Uh, almost too many to count, but it's definitely oriented um, around kind of some of the feedback that we've got. It's like, hey, like, what's most helpful? Like, uh, trying to just like get on the ground floor, boots on the ground, and be like, hey, like, what are developers interested in? Like, what do they look for when they're um, looking to build on a new ecosystem? And that um, uh, really came in and kind of built our strategy around Save 2 as well. So, with the launch of Save 2s testnet and mainnet, you're going to see a ton of initiatives oriented around just that, which is, you know, onboarding new projects on to say, um, you know, whether it's EVM or, you know, say native that wants to leverage V2, uh, it's a continued focus uh, and, you know, will remain that, that way.
Hey, can can you still hear me? I'm not sure if I got disconnected there. I'm not hearing anything. Hey, can can people hear me? Maybe like some reactions. I'm not sure. Maybe we lost the host. Uh, I guess we're having some technical difficulties. See some reactions though. So um, yeah, we'll wait to see. Um, but I think that was the conclusion of our of our space. But uh, I'll let the host. I'll let the host. Uh, All right, well, maybe I'll just take this opportunity uh, to thank everyone again for joining the space. Uh, you know, huge thanks um, to crypto miners. I'm not sure if you guys can still hear me, but, uh, you know, appreciate everyone joining. Always exciting to chat about Say. And, you know, uh, be sure to definitely follow the, the Say official account. Be, be sure to follow me. Be, uh, follow the Say Marines and, you know, get connected. Let's, exciting times are ahead. So excited to welcome you all to, to the Say community ecosystem. Have a great rest of your day, guys. Bye-bye.